All right. Let's check it out here. That is definitely better. Let's turn up the sound here. I think my main reaction to all this, it's definitely better. I like how your arms are moving. Uh, there's some better stuff in the head. I would say the main thing is that everything feels like it has a very specific pivot off of the chest. It's almost like a bobble head, if that makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like movements, especially once you go into a turn like this. It doesn't feel like if the guy is, you know, whatever on his bed and, and he's sitting, he's got his laptop on his on his lap. <laughs> it doesn't feel like any movement is coming off of here, the root where the character. I'm exaggerating, but you know, would lean over, go, "Huh, what's going on?" It feels like everything is very specifically rotating pivoting off the chest, like I said. So when he does that turn, instead of being so clean out of here, uh, imagine it comes more out of the root so that there's a little bit of a tilt over, like he would kind of tilt over this way. I mean, that's way too much and it makes no sense because I can't draw. But your, you know, the head would end up maybe in this position with the look and everything. You know, he's kind of slightly tilted over. But so there's just a feeling of the whole body is moving, he's shifting over his butt cheeks. So it's not just that um, very clean Y rotation. So I don't see anything really in him leaning back a tiny bit, if that makes sense. So just, it's just kind of a clean rotation that feels too computery. Watch out, he's looking kind of straight in the camera at this point. And head wise, just watch out in terms of your arcs, there's something that feels a bit too like that you want to be a bit more exaggerated with the arc i don't know if you want to move a curl at the end but you don't you're doing this where you start and then you're flat and then it comes back in a flat arc again see how this comes back and then this is very straight so it feels like it's doing and then flat and then flat versus having a bit of a because i have a little stop here coming back and his little look up could be up this way with a little bit of hold come back so i'm exaggerating the arcs but even this is pretty straight down. That gets better because he's starting to turn. And watch out, like you still have moments where, for instance, this arm has a very single movement feeling, meaning it's just kind of moving on its own, especially if you do this here. There's nothing in the shoulder, there's nothing in the chest. And I know this is two frames, but there's something where you probably just reduce the amount and still involve the shoulder a bit. And then as you do this, the same thing. There's nothing going on here. It feels like that arm is just moving separately. Also, you're moving that arm back, but then at the end, the chest goes this way. I would move the arm back, take the shoulder back and up with it. And then the chest goes this way as well, because it's the arm that kind of pulls him that way as well. And again, separate move where I can scrub through and there's just so much movement through here, but then there's nothing really going on there. It gives it all a very broken, separate feel. As you go back here, that's not too bad, but then you got a massive, massive jump here. You have to look at your spacing. That's not too bad, but then if you track this line of his shoulder and neck, it's such a big jump. And then it's small again. Where it's pretend you would go this far, right? It's someone would push or someone would pull him out. That head would snap and go this way just to just to drag. So having the whole piece here, all of that body section with the head move over one frame, just kind of loses its its weight and sense of scale. It's still weird how skinny those arms are. It's a bit of a weird shape with that feeling so wide with the arms so skinny. I'm not sure if you can scale those arms. Speaking of arms, as you go up like this, you don't really want to put your elbow that's bent, or your arm that's bent with the elbow exactly flat away from camera. So I would either have the elbow up or the elbow down. But if you do, uh, if you squint here, do your silhouette test, uh, it just seems like just like a stump. Because you don't have any bending of the arm and also the, the uh, what's it called? The wrist and fingers, it's just all overlapping in front of the forearm versus something where you could just be a bit higher. You can show this and then you can still have your you know, whatever hand pose in my fantastically horrible drawing. Mm 
even this year at the end. That little up and down feels very fast, but it also feels very wiggly. I'm tracking, you can track any point here and it feels like it's doing this type of up and down. So you gotta really smooth out your arcs. And again, if you have a big body move like that, the head will be dragging. Unless you're leading with the head, but then again, it would be separate. It wouldn't just it would separate it. It wouldn't feel like this and this is moving as one piece. Also, again, it's just a weird enveloping where like, your neck feels really, really far on the left side with big shoulder stretched out with really skinny arms. It's just strange, strange rig proportions. And watch out, you got very separated finger movements. They all kind of move at the same time and stop at the same time. But then nothing in the wrist is going on. It just feels like a very broken section through there where you want to tighten your wrist movement. So if he brings up his his fingers up like this, why is that? Is that because he wants to shield himself or he's scared? But then you could probably lower the wrist here and then bring him up into this pose. But it feels also your wrist is like this and your fingers are like that as opposed to a bit more aligned. So there's all kinds of weird stuff. So if you have like if you have it like this, I would probably curl the fingers a bit more so they're a bit more aligned with um, with the palm there. And as you go from this to this pose, that could also mean that the hand could go a bit higher. Because of that, the shoulder goes up and maybe the chest goes back a bit. So again, why is he moving those fingers? Is that a change because he wants to uh, protect himself or just a, a different pose for I'm scared and freaked out? So if that's a change for him mentally, I would see, well, how can I show this with the whole body? And right now, all I'm seeing is mostly something in here, a little bit in the shoulder, but not much in the head. Again, the head and chest feel very connected, but also facially nothing changes. So because everything is kind of the same, this feels very, very just separated and broken, which is like a single piece of geometry moving. All right, so definitely look at how you transition and what is moving and if it's a single thing, just over a couple of frames, but overall also watch out your arcs for your arcs. I mean, it's just very, very, very jittery through the end here. And look out at how fast your character is moving, losing a, losing its sense of weight. All right, and if needed, you can always reshoot reference. You just kind of look at specific moves that you want to shoot reference for. It doesn't have to be the whole shot. Okay, that is kind of it. Thank you. All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.